Calcaneal fractures. Calcaneal fractures is a huge topic. This video will cover some of the important aspects in calcaneal fractures. And here is a list of the important topics in calcaneal fractures. Basically, there are two lines for the calcaneal fractures. The primary fracture line which run obliquely through the posterior facet. The primary fracture line divides the calcaneus into two parts, an intermedial sustentacular fragment and a posterolateral tuberosity fragment. Here is a diagram that shows the primary fracture line. There is the intermedial fragment, the constant fragment or the sustentacular fragment and there is a posterolateral fragment the primary fracture line goes through the posterior facet why do we call the intermedial fragment the constant fragment because it stays in position connected to the talus by the talocalcaneal ligaments and the interosseous ligament there is a secondary fracture line, and it will produce either a tongue-type fracture or a joint depression fracture, as you can see here. This is the Essex leprosity classification. If it is a tongue-type fracture, it can do percutaneous fixation. However, Sanders have its own classification and that's based on the number of articular fragments seen on the coronal CT scans. So there are several types. Type 1, non-displaced fracture. Type 2, you will have one fracture line. If you have a fracture line, you will split the calcaneus into two. You will split anything into two if you have one fracture line. So that will be type 2. If you have two fracture line, then you will get three fragments. That is type 3. If you have three fracture lines or more, or if it is comminuted, you will get four fragments or more, and that is type 4. Type 4 have the most common complication of surgery, which is wound dehiscence. In general, if you have two part interarticular fracture, you will do RIF. If you have type 4 fracture, you will do subtalar arthrodesis. You may want to delay the surgery until the soft tissue condition improves and until you have the wrinkle test. Avulsion fracture of the calcaneal tuberosity. That avulsion fracture of the calcaneal tuberosity will have a very thin overlapping soft tissue envelope. That can lead to full thickness skin necrosis if the fracture is not urgently reduced and fixed. These are the types of avulsion fracture of the calcaneus that you may encounter. You probably will need to do immediate open reduction and internal fixation or close reduction and percutaneous screw fixation and this could prevent skin necrosis. So how do you do that? You will try to do closed reduction and hold the fracture with reduction clamps and you can use screws percutaneously perpendicular to the fracture especially in the tongue type fracture. You may need to open the fracture and put some suture anchors in the calcaneus if the fracture piece is small. Postoperatively, you need to monitor the skin condition. There is one entity that may be worth mentioning. Avulsion of the bifurcate ligament may give you an anterior calcaneal process fracture. Open calcaneal fractures. If it's grade 1 or grade 2, 
open fractures medially, then you can do surgical repair by a lateral approach because it's open medially. Will be no significant difference between infection rate for this fracture and the similar one that is closed fracture. Give the patient antibiotics for two to three days. Open reduction internal fixation is not recommended for grade three medial wounds and for most lateral wounds. With open injuries, there is a high risk of wound complication, including amputation. The stress fracture of the calcaneus. It is a clinical diagnosis. The patient will have heel pain increased by prolonged weight bearing, and the patient will have difficulty in ambulation and in running. This problem is a common area for foot pain. It is really exercise-induced foot and heel pain, more in female. The patient will have diffuse swelling and tenderness, positive squeeze test. When squeezing the calcaneus from side to side, the patient will complain of pain. The x-ray may show a sclerotic line. This may be present in about 15% of the patients. And it usually takes about two to three weeks to appear. And it is usually in the posterior part of the bone. MRI will help you in the early diagnosis if the x-ray is negative. There will be a dark line in T1, and the line will be oriented obliquely or vertically. There will be increased signal on T2. Treatment. Rest. Avoid or restrict weight bearing. Do physiotherapy. Bowler angle. The normal bowler angle is 20 to 40 degrees. So what is the bowler angle? It's an angle between two lines. A line connecting the anterior process of the calcaneus to the highest point on the posterior articular surface. And the second line connecting the highest point on the posterior articular surface of the calcaneus to the superior tuberosity. Collapse of the posterior facet will decrease or flatten the bowler angle. In this case, a subtalar distraction arthrodesis is preferred to treat the subtalar arthritis to restore the height of the calcaneus. Spine fractures. A history of a fall from a height and calcaneal fracture may be associated with about 10% incidence of a spine fracture. Always examine the spine. Always examine the neurological status of the patient. Compartment syndrome. When it happens, especially if it is missed, there will be contractures of the intrinsic flexor muscles of the foot, and that will create clawing of the lesser toes, will make problems with shoe wear. The plantar fascia will limit the space that's available for hematoma and the swelling. That will cause damage to the intrinsic flexors of the foot. There are 10 compartments in the hand and nine compartments in the foot. These are the nine compartments, one medial, one lateral, four inter OCI, one adductor, and two central, one superficial, and one deep. There's another entity called isolated flexed gray toe that can occur from screws in the sustentaculum fragment, and the screws are too long. The tendon of the flexor hallucis longus lies underneath the sustentaculum tili. The sustentaculum tili is called the constant fragment. When the screw is too long, the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus is tethered over the screw. So this is how it happens. You go from lateral to medial drill and you put the screw 
during fixation of intraarticular fracture of the calcaneus. This complication can also happen from fracture of the sustentaculum tili. The fracture of this bone can cause fibrosis and stenosis around the flexor hallucis longus tendon. The patient will complain of pain and catching sensation in the medial foot, especially when the patient tries to do active flexion of the great toe. How about blood supply? The major blood supply to the heel pad is the medial calcaneal branch of the posterior tibial artery. In the extensile lateral approach, the flap is supplied by the lateral calcaneal branch of the perineal artery. Approaches, two approaches, the sinus tarsi approach or the extensile lateral approach. Each one of them can risk injury to a nerve, as you can see here in this diagram. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.